Andra Zaharia, and I'm delighted to be your host for the third season of the Drag and Drop Show. What is the difference between a rebrand and a brand update? We have the answer for you, and it comes from a company that used empathy and courage to match the internal understanding of their brand with how it was perceived externally. James Thompson, Senior Art Director at Unbounce, goes into great detail to explain how they evolved their brand to better reflect how the company had matured. He walks us through the entire brand update process, from the people involved to the public launch, with particular focus on the messy middle, the value of the process itself. Discover why it's not uncommon to get cold feet in the final stages of a brand update, and how to manage the fears that come with being hyper aware of every single detail. Find out how Unbounce used an internal launch to empower the team to roll out the evolved brand to the public with a deep understanding of it and commitment to it. It's invigorating to see how company culture and rebranding support and strengthen one another, and Unbounce is a wonderful example of how to actually achieve this. Having powered over 1 billion conversions, the company leverages its admired corporate culture to deliver a great platform and a truly lovable brand. I'm thrilled to give you a behind the scenes look right now. It's Andra Zaharia here, bringing you the latest episode of the Drag and Drop Show by Creatopy. Hello, James, and welcome to the Drag and Drop Show. We're super excited to have you here. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. I'm really excited to be here as well. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm so, so curious to get kind of more inside information and an insider's perspective on how the Unbounced rebrand unfolded and how it happened. Um, you launched it last year, but it still feels so fresh and so powerful uh, and so full of energy, which is, I think, that's something everyone needs right now, especially marketers who are under a lot of pressure. So I'm very curious to kind of dig um, into what happened during the rebrand brand maybe a little bit before it and um obviously you know what has changed in the past year for you and the rest of the unbounced team sounds great yeah i'm excited to uh, talk through it um, so um sorry go ahead <laughs> no go for it uh so what i wanted to kind of ask is that you're in a special let's say position or you were you know last year when you joined unbounce you kind of joined the team when the rebranding process was already underway. So what was that like to, you know, come in the team uh, when the process was kind of already in developing? Um, that's a really great question. I like to think that my the position I was in coming into the company was um, uh, was was kind of twofold in that uh, it was obviously, you know, we had a, a bit of a challenge ahead of us in that we we were we knew we were updating our brand over the coming months and we obviously had a lot of preparation to uh, in order to launch that so uh, a lot of hard work still ahead of us uh, and and making sure that uh, we launch in a way that was going to resonate internally within the company and then also with our audience and our our market as well uh, but then also it was partly an easy job because like a lot of the a lot of the hard work had already been done so coming into it a lot of the you know the foundational uh, pieces um, that made up the brand architecture had been created um, when I joined the company so a lot of that um, the auditing a lot of the the research a lot of the development of the um, the, the guidelines and then and then uh, a lot of the the collateral which comes along with that had had been produced so uh, part of my job was also obviously quite easy because a lot of that work had been done but it was obviously a testament to a lot of the hard work and, and efforts on uh, of so many people at Unbounce in, in a lot of different departments having collaborated really closely with each other over the over the 14 months that it took to to do the bulk of the uh, the brand update um, and and all of that hard work kind of accumulating in 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 last year's uh, brand update so yeah 
there's there's a lot I, I would love to unpack there and we're gonna go through it bit by bit so um, there was this kind of pool of work that was already there and you had to kind of catch up really fast were you kind of close to unbounce before uh, joining the team what was it like you know to get up to speed with everything and to you know understand the brand's identity and to be able to kind of plug into that and and start to work um, towards you know, putting this rebrand together and then making it happen. So, so I'd, having worked in the tech industry, I'd obviously been familiar with Unbounce. So there was there was part of my knowledge was already across certain aspects of the brand which were present at the time. So um, some of that brand equity which existed before we evolved our brand last year. Um, and then coming into it, it it's a case of uh, having worked on numerous brand launches in the past. It's a case of um, obviously a lot of hard work, as I said, had gone into that. So it was doing justice to a lot of that hard work, making sure that it had launched in a, in a way that was you know, going to resonate internally and externally as well. Um, and 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 really kind of, you know, a, a lot of the, the part I played in that was aligning the teams who were involved in 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 that launch, um, you know, working across the different phases of which things we're going to launch at which times, uh, how we're going to communicate it internally, uh, what are the different stages of external launch, what are the different pieces of collateral which are included in that. Um, also, just partly stakeholder management. Uh, there's a lot of um, kind of like hesitation and a little bit of uncertainty, which can sometimes come from uh, the the final stages of a, a brand update. So um, part of the the job then is ma- managing that and mitigating some of those 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 you know fears internally and making sure that everyone's really kind of comfortable and on board with the the brand when it launches. So that uh, we're all across it internally and it's a very you know it's as as seamless a launch that it can be um, when when we launched. I think that's a very interesting point that you made about kind of getting like something similar to cold feet before getting married, I think, uh, yeah. because there's so much writing on this and you realize that it's finally happening. And then it sets in that have we covered everything? Have we done everything that we could? Is there anything that we missed and things like that? So given your experience, which I definitely want to go back to uh, just a little bit further, um, I wanted to ask res- specifically about this particular aspect of managing expectations and you know reminding people why everything started because you start off with so much enthusiasm but by the time that the launch kind of nears uh, you start to get a bit jittery and nervous so what is your go-to kind of approach to dealing with the situation which is absolutely normal and everyone gets it no matter you know how hard you've worked and how much uh, how well you've done your homework, so mm-hmm. to speak. Completely. So, I, I, and it completely makes sense in that if you know, if you know that you're, and then maybe this is a little bit of a superficial, it's obviously so much more of a superficial look at a, uh, what a rebrand entails. There's, it's a lot more skin deep than uh, the metaphor I'm about to use. But if you, if you know that you're going to go out into um, a big group of friends, and you, you're you're debuting a new outfit, for example. You're going to be a little bit more self-conscious of it if it's something you haven't worn before, and you're going to be a little bit more self-conscious of what people might think of that. So, um, it's it's understandable that obviously something which has been brewing for a little while is going to be top of mind for people. People are also, also within the company. If we know that we're launching a brand, people are going to be. Um, a lot more aware of other companies in the space as well. So a lot more aware of some of those visual elements, some of those brand traits for other companies in this space. Um, so you become, you do become very hyper aware of those things and it becomes top of mind. Whereas uh, in your day to day, when you're not preparing for a rebrand, those are perhaps things which don't, uh, which, which aren't so noticeable within the company. Um, and it, as it is, within the six months before we uh, evolved our brand and launched uh, in 2019, there were uh, numerous um, rebrands within the tech space, uh, specifically within our uh, close space within the market. So, of course, this was going to cause questions internally. What does this mean? Are they, is the brand too close to us? Um, are there certain visual elements which look like us? Um, 
if we if we launch now, does it look like we're jumping on the rebrand bandwagon? All of these questions kind of come out, and it's a case of just answering them head on, um, not you know treating these things in a silo where we kind of uh, ignore it. You have to discuss these things head on and kind of say, well, okay, well, what does this mean? Let's look at this other brand. Like, what are the things which are sim similar? Is it really going to be detrimental to us? Um, and and just kind of come at some of these things with some you know, with, with some confidence. Also, because you've gone through the process of evolving your brand um, in that you've been looking internally and deciding who you want to be as a company and how you want to be represented. So perhaps some of that has been influenced by uh, the market. Um, perhaps you've taken a look at competitors in your space, but a good rebrand, you you're really kind of looking at who you want to be and that shouldn't necessarily change depending on who else is in your space and who is who else is in your area as well so there's a certain amount of you know staying true to 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 what are the core foundational things which influenced that rebrand or that evolution in the first place and 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 having confidence in that um, having the confidence to launch with that, even though it obviously, you know, it comes with a certain amount of risk. Any rebrand comes with a certain amount of risk. So definitely, especially when it's something so, you know, so big, so powerful, it, it kind of helps surface and crystallize all of these extremely valuable conversations about who are we, why are we doing this? And, and it helps kind of form and crystallize that North Star that you were just mentioning earlier. And I find your observation so powerful because there is so much, you know, talk of competitors and what's going on in the space and everything moves so fast. This makes uh, rebranded rebrands in SaaS extremely challenging because you're going to want to capture as much as you can. You're going to want to be as up to date uh, and in tune with what customers want at any point in time. But a rebrand is not not only for that. It serves that purpose, but it also serves this purpose of consolidating the, the company's identity, which I think is extremely powerful. And I really appreciate that transparent approach to talking about these things instead of just uh, chucking them alongside with like things that happened and that we don't, <laughs> let's say, address because they're uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, they spur questions uh, upon questions that sometimes get answered and sometimes it takes just a while and a process to to get to the right answers um and i and i think uh, part of the value of a rebrand which i think some people um miss or skip over when they're going through the process of evolving their company at one stage or another is is the value of the process itself i think a lot of people get fixated on the end goal and what you know how we looked like how we perceived at the end the big launch the big wow um and you you miss almost like what is just as as important as uh part of the process which is the process itself so the conversation um which happens along the way of <clears throat> discussing internally who who you are as a company how you want to be perceived um do, does your uh, understanding of who you are as a company internally match your external understanding as well um and that's one of the things which which actually sparked uh the initial stages of the um the brand evolution for Unbounce was that it had become obvious there was a little bit of a misalignment between our internal understanding of who we were as a company and the external perception. So we wanted to make sure that 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 understand that who we were was a lot more transparent, and and who we wanted, who we thought we were as a company was being aptly represented in the market and to our customers as well. Um, so it was the process of of having those conversations, and some of those conversations are going to be difficult. There is going to be a little bit of misalignment, which happens, and the important thing is for everyone to express, you know, this is my viewpoint. You work through the process together. You involve key stakeholders in the business and, well, the entire business along the way, ideally, um, in a way that everyone is then aligned and it, it becomes, yes, it's this big, big launch uh, externally, but there's, it's this big um, thing internally as well, which brings everyone together in the company and, in, and it unifies you in a way that uh, few other things can do um, in a company's history. 
I love that. I love that perspective. And I think that is one of the most valuable things about a rebrand, that internal alignment. And what I always saw about Unbounce particularly is that it is a kind of brand that is very aligned with itself. There's no big gap in between what it claims it does and what it actually delivers. And mm. that is something that I've always treasured about it. I've been learning and from and, and kind of following that bounce for the past six years. So I've seen it grow and evolve um, at an incredible pace. Uh, and I've also seen the community grow around it and everything else that has happened. So there was a lot to learn there. And I always appreciated that the internal culture, which I knew was great, um, and I've been following key people from Unbounce and on Twitter and seeing kind of the kind of conversations they have and how they approach things, that is actually reflected into everything. And now it's also kind of more vividly uh, reflected in the rebrand, which I thought was very powerful and very energetic and very Unbounce-like, <laughs> just to, uh, to, to sort of say that. And it, it is very interesting to me, you know, that you mentioned you went through several other rebrands, you know, in your past work experiences. So I'm curious, what did you take from those experiences that particularly helped you when you joined Unbounce at that kind of critical moment when things were coming together, but there was also kind of a lot of work to be done in terms of alignment and, and actually implementing things? Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think some of the things which, which uh, uh, were top of mind going into the, you know, the three to six months leading up to when we uh, launched, launched our Evolved brand <clears throat> were making sure that we did have internal alignments before we, we, we launched. So knowing that um, it's, it's super important to have internal buy-in with a new brand and for people to uh, feel bought in, comfortable. Uh, for, for, for some people, especially people who've been with companies for a longer period of time, um, there can be that hesitation and that you have, you know, with, in the case of Unbounce, there was 10 years of it, nearly 10 years of equity there, um, which obviously people are attached to in one, one form or another. So in order to launch something which is visibly different, um, which has a slightly different style, um, you, you want pe for people to be across that internally so that they're going to exude that externally as well, especially when it comes to people within customer success teams, within marketing as well. Um, so having an internal soft launch uh, a few months before external launch, um, I from from my past experience, I recognize that this is a, a super important thing to do. Obviously, a lot of other people at Unbounce recognize this as well. Um, and so we, we, we launched internally a few months before we were going to launch the brand. So we had turned it into obviously it's a celebration of a lot of the hard work which had gone into it and this this huge milestone in the company and it and it was a celebration it was a, a town hall which we so we have three town halls a year so we turned one of our town halls into a uh, a brand launch uh, celebration town hall um we served this is when we were all back in the office we served up charcuterie we love charcuterie at unbounce so we wanted to celebrate with a massive charcuterie plate um, and of course, you, you you walk through all of the different facets of the brand, so everyone's familiar with it. You celebrate all the different things which you're introducing to 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 the company and in the market and internally. And um, the, there's a lot of little things you can include there as well. So in our instance, we uh, we had a give back for all of our unbouncers, where we had this swag box. So it was designed um, uh, the the design team designed it to be in the new brand uh it had uh swag items within there such as like pens t-shirts custom branded um chocolate um and these are all things which unbouncers then take and put on their desks so it's you'll you'll you have it in your day-to-day -day for the coming months before you've launched externally so people are getting familiar with it you're writing with the pen which has the new style you're getting familiar with the new brand attributes, the values. Oh, so everyone's there. getting familiar with a lot of these uh, foundational <laughs> brand items, whether it's the new colors, the new logo uh, being applied to some of these Not items, sure but then also, why. you know, our values, which are being communicated internally as well. Um, 
So one of the things we refreshed is our, our, our brand values and uh, part of the internal communication of this was to apply them to posters. So within the office, we had these posters showing what our values were um, in fun typographical ways. And it, people were seeing these things every day in, in, in the months leading up to the external launch. So people had plenty of time to become familiar with them so that when we launched, um, there was... I like to think a lot of internal uh, alignment with that with that brand, so that it it felt like it it was it was natural. It didn't feel like it was suddenly we we're kind of switching switching the lights over to something very completely different. It was it, everyone felt aligned with it, and it was a very natural transition for everyone within the company, which was very important to us. Yeah, that to me sounds like an excellent way to go about it. And it is the first time that I've heard about this. I know that, you know, people communicate internally and they have everything, but to give that kind of buffer zone, to give that, that time to get comfortable and to know that this is what we do now and not kind of overlap that with the pressure of doing it for customers and the entire community and, and everything else that you have to focus on at that point. I think it is extremely valuable and um, hopefully it will serve, you know, listeners well into their own kind of rebranding efforts and, and uh, processes. So you mentioned that, you know, you got all the, obviously all the stakeholders got together and you aligned really well and in the sense who was part of, let's say, when you look at the roles that were most involved in, in making the decisions and, in you know, figuring out those um, kind of subtle but very important aspects related to the rebrand, who are the people that were involved in this process? Um, and I'm very curious to also find out kind of what does ownership look like, you know, on a project like this, which deals with so many things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, completely. And... Uh, um, going through a brand evolution like the one we did at um, Unbounce, there are obviously so many different people involved from so many different departments, each playing a different role. Um, and and everyone as part of that process is integral to the, to the launch. Um, but obviously, you have different people taking care of different, different parts of that, that process. So, um, you have, you know, the, a core working team who's generally made up of like uh, designers, um, content writers. So designers working on obviously a lot of the the visual style, which is being updated, looking at logos, looking at color schemes, fonts, etc. Um, also, uh, some of our foundational elements, such as our personality. Um, and then you have a lot of collaboration between those designers and content writers who are looking at the tone of voice. Uh, who are looking at, um, again, our brand personality traits uh, and and how, you know, we wish for them to be shown up as well. A lot of things, a lot of these things are kind of being worked through uh, in collaboration between those sorts of teams. And then you have close collabor collaboration with customer success. Um, obviously, our customer was at the forefront of our um, brand evolution. Uh, we wanted to to move into a space where we where we were more externally, um, you know, representing more of a customer centric um, customer centric natures to our brand, um, and you know, part of that was being representing ourselves as being more people first. So customer success and having that customer connection was integral to that brand launch. Um, product marketing as well. So connecting with our um, uh, our segments in our in our market and having a, a good understanding of who our customers are was integral to that. So close collaboration with them, um, and then also collaboration with products and UX teams as well. Partly on documentation of how we document our brand as well, but then also um, in some of the processes we went through for testing, um, interviewing mm -hmm. our customers to make sure that our new brand was going to resonate, um, and then also you know, interviewing internally as well, interviewing so many different stakeholders within the business to to get their opinions and their thoughts on on how they felt we should be represented externally um, to, to make sure that their voices were being heard and incorporated into the brand, brand refresh as well. That is an extremely kind of deep way to go about it. And to me, and kind of this is 
why we are doing this podcast season and why we're dedicating it to rebrands is to help more people realize if they've never gone through such a process and if they haven't gone through it, you know, to the depths that you have at Unbounce, um, to help them realize that there are so many layers to them, that there are so many, uh, let's say, both personal and kind of community related things that you have to take into account, that it is obviously not something, a rebrand is not something that's limited to only, let's say, its aesthetic part, that it's tied to um, coherency to, to fi- figuring out that North Star, to getting everyone um, to agree that this is the right direction and to also be able to project this into the future. Because that to me is one of the most challenging parts. So you've talked to everyone, you've done the research, you've done the work, you've done the uh, internal alignment. Mm-hmm. And then you have to figure out how everything orchestrates into a vision that will last you for let's say maybe the next decade or whenever Unbounce decides to to do the next rebrand and so much can happen in that space so how do you feel you know the the rebrand has uh changed or impacted you know the past year because it's it's let's say You've had this time, which has been quite challenging for everyone to see the rebrand at work. So I'm curious, you know, what has happened in this space? Yeah, that's a great question. Obviously, the last year being pretty intense, a lot of big changes in the world um, and Unbounce living through them in the same way that obviously a lot of other companies have been. Um, I I think we we were at the luxury of having gone through um, a brand evolution the year before um, a lot of these changes um, in the world have have happened in that we were able to double down on some of those foundational elements which we'd consolidated as part of the the brand refresh such as our core values um, so that when for example, the pandemic was happening when we were all transitioning to moving from home. You, you ask yourself the question, you know, how do we deal with this? What are the things we rely on? Uh, and it all comes back to who we are as a company, what our values are, what's important to us. And those things inform how we move through these these difficult times. So looking at our, you know, our, our internal values of um, empathy and courage, for example, these are two values which showed up highly when we moved to working from home in the way that um, we we would check in with each other a lot more than perhaps you would do normally. You would um, be a little bit courageous just to kind of, um, you know, see if there's areas you might help out in, uh, lend, lend a hand with someone else, like a different department or a different area which might be struggling. Um, also making sure that everyone feels, uh, comfortable in the home space, um, recognizing that, you know, everyone had different environments when they were transitioning to working from home. So, um, making sure that you're, you're kind of empathizing with, with different people in the company, um, in, in different environments and, and, and being able to accommodate for that in the way that you move forward. Um, so really kind of relying on a lot of those values to, to inform a lot of the decisions we're making moving forward. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very powerful um, perspective, in my opinion. And it highlights kind of the role that let this rebrand can play into creating kind of an anchor for everyone that they can go back to whenever they feel confused or uncertain or troubled or anything else like that. It creates that common, let's say, meeting point, um, that common kind of shared space, uh, both mental, emotional, uh, you know, it, it serves many purposes. Yeah. And I also think that it it's wonderful to hear that, you know, these values and that's what a great company culture does um and it not, doesn't only reflect in the brand and the community but it reflects on how people treat each other internally and how they walk the talk 
Plus, I find that people are also kind of naturally drawn and they will gravitate more to brands mm -hmm. that like Unbounce, really practice what they preach and really provide their customers with that stability, with that, let's say, ability to um, anticipate what they might get with that transparency, with that um, just empathy that you mentioned and that we we discussed kind of at length and in a previous podcast season. So thank you for sharing that. That is extremely powerful and something that maybe is not immediately obvious when you do a rebrand, but so much happens before a rebrand, during it and after it that um, it makes it, well, that, that is what why we're talking about it today and then going into these lands. And I loved how you constantly talk about the fact that you elevated your brand because I'm I think that our listeners would like to know, you know, how kind of the brand identity evolved because the way that you approached it at Unbounce is different than, let's say, radical rebrand that changes everything you chose a different approach. Could you tell me just a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, completely. I, I think a lot of companies perhaps go through the process of rebranding for for a lot of different reasons. Um, uh, you, you, you look at companies like um, Miro, for example. So Miro uh, changed their name, so they used to be called Real Time Board. So that it was it was quite a, a distinct change in the market, in that you're changing your name, you're changing a lot of uh, a lot of the vis visual uh, elements which are associated with that as well. Um, f for us, there was we. We were coming up to 10 years, uh, having been around in the market for 10 years, obviously, and it felt like the, there were, there was a, there's a little bit of a disconnect, as I mentioned earlier, around how we perceived ourselves internally with what we were um, presenting externally as well. So we wanted to uh, connect to those things so that they aligned a little bit more closely. Um, but we wanted to do it in a way that um, we're not, you're not, we weren't completely changing everything about ourselves, which we built, very, uh, worked very hard to build over the over the 10 years. So a lot of that brand equity we wanted to carry with us. Um, we wanted to include, uh, to to evolve our way in a brand that, um, our brand in a way that was inclusive of, of our customers as well. Um, obviously our customers, super important. Um, to, to everything we do. And we wanted to make sure that they were forefront of the, the brand evolution. Um, so, so, so looking at what those things are about our brand, which we wanted to re maintain. So, you know, the, the name we wanted to keep that was really important to us. Um, certain elements of the logo as well, we wanted to still be recognizable. Um, the blue in our uh, color palette, we wanted to retain a blue, even though we evolved it a little bit to be a little bit more richer. Um, but then we complemented that with uh, more of a diverse color palette as well. So we added um, some some contrasting tones, pink, uh, green, a yellow, etc. cetera. Um, we, we refined our logos so, so that it was uh, more recognizable at smaller sizes and uh, felt a little bit more bold, uh, a little bit more representational of, of who we were as a company. Um, and and so there were elements we were we were keeping and we wanted to retain, um, and then there were elements which we knew we wanted to evolve as well. Um, one thing we wanted to put at the forefront of our brand evolution was our customers. Um, so we wanted to to present, um, we wanted to to make sure that we were evolving our brand in a way that was relevant to our customers and inclusive of our customers. So um, so when we launched uh, the, the rebrand in 2019, uh, we accompanied it with a campaign that um, included marketers in our space as well. So um, the campaign was all around uh, making extra your, your, new, your new normal making extra your new normal, there you go, um, and celebrating remarkable marketers who are doing great things in their space with their campaigns and and shouting them out. So um, part of our new uh, our, our, our new brand attributes were about, um, you know, pushing, pushing yourself to the next level and just kind of like um, challenging yourself a little bit more, being a little bit more ambitious and courageous and, and, and you know, and 
part of that we wanted to come across through that campaign as well so that's where the the, the che- make your make actually your new normal campaign um, came about to accompany a lot of those elements which you're putting out there in the market. And it was super impactful just to from a perspective of a marketer who's been, let's say, on the other side and who saw the rebrand launch and the campaign and the way that people engaged with it, plus your um, donations campaign, which you did to uh, donate, you know, your your experts time and your specialist time and your team's time to uh, NGOs and other organizations uh, that really needed them to, you know, make a bigger impact and, and do and reach the results that they wanted to to achieve. And I love the enthusiasm that accompanied everything and the level of energy. And it spoke so well of everything that Unbound had built over the last decade, exactly like you mentioned. I think that this, let's say, new stage in the life of the brand is one that definitely suits and bounds very well. And that also reflects the really hard work that people do behind the scenes because to power all of these other businesses and all of these customers takes so much. And it doesn't take just technology. It doesn't take just design. It doesn't take just content. It takes everything and and so much more. um, And it has to work uh, in perfect harmony so that people not only get results, but they also get to enjoy doing it. So that's something very valuable that I saw from from the outside. (laughs) Completely, and and that that campaign, um, it, it it aligned with so many things about our our brand. We wanted to to put out there as well, like our, uh, a lot of our core cool values internally. Um, and as you mentioned, the, the 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 campaign we did partner with um, Peace Geeks. So uh, for every marketer who who shouted out um, who was shouted out on social media. Uh, we dedicated some of our time to um, uh, to supporting um, Peace Geeks, obviously a non for profit. Um, so part of that give back once we'd um, finished the campaign was to 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 then uh, do a bit of a slam with Peace Geeks. So we supported them in um, some of their upcoming campaigns, uh, their Give It Up for Peace campaign. Okay. Um, and then some 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 work on their website, etc. So really, kind of collaborating with marketers pretty closely, um, which which folded really nicely into some of the uh, the brand attributes, uh, which were part of that that brand evolution. Mm. Did you deal with any kind of, let's say, emotional attachment that people had um, with the former brand and everything that it looked like, either in the community or internally as well? You you did mention this internally, uh, but was there any, let's say, not necessarily resistance, but um, let's say that pang of nostalgia that people sometimes get? <laughs> uh, from the, the, the community and externally in particular? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I think for 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 any change, there's all you're always going to receive um, a critique, and critique can critique is going to be obviously very positive from a lot of different places. And but then there's always a chance you'll receive some some negative critique as well. So, um, there's a certain aspect of 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 change. And anything which changes, especially something which has been familiar to someone for a long period of time, such as 10 years, you're familiar with like certain colors, a certain um, style, uh, certain certain visual attributes, et cetera. And then when that changes, it it causes, it can cause a little bit of confusion. What does this mean? What does this mean to me as well? So um, it's understandable that you'll receive some feedback, which is along those lines. Um, But the, the, I don't think there's been any sort of significant, you know, rebrand um, which hasn't received any level of critique along those lines as well in general. So, you know, when when Instagram updated their their icon to the to mm. the colored version, it was met with um, extreme critique. But now, obviously, a lot of us associate that with Instagram, and it feels, you know, part of the natural. Brand. It is their brand. <laughs> it feels very natural. Um, 
you know, same same with a lot of other companies. The Eiffel Tower, when the Eiffel Tower was built in France, it was called a concrete monstrosity. Uh, but now it's probably the most romantic symbol in the world, and and everyone obviously associates it with Paris, even though it was originally meant to be a temporary structure. Um, so the important thing is to it is to take some of the critique with a grain of salt and just um, make sure that internally that you're you're talking about these things, you're having conversation, you're not sweeping it under the rug and hiding it. Uh, um, you're, 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 kind of, you're addressing these conversations for and saying, hey, what do we think about this? Is this, um, do we agree with this? Uh, maybe, maybe there's a couple of valid points here and there, maybe there's, but it, you know, that conversation is great. But does that mean that you need to go back to the drawing board and refresh every time someone critiques your brand? Uh, probably not. Um, otherwise, you'd be refreshing your brand every three months. Um, so, so there's a certain. The important thing is to is to address it, not hide it. Have conversation around it, and and know that that sometimes you are going to receive um, um, feed, feedback comes in all shapes and sizes. So, um, but it does. It, it does. The good thing <laughs> is that the most of it was positive. So, thankfully, thankfully that was a good thing in our case, at least. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's a testament to all of the work done uh, in terms of research, in terms of talking to people and actually understanding their context and where they come from and what they value and everything else. It's everything that got poured into the rebrand. And that's what, you know, to me, that is one of the ways to minimize risk, um, to minimize risk in a way that's actually effective and that's actually very in tune with um, customers' needs and their context and their um expectations of the brand and that sort of communication on all of these levels and on all of these kind of very subtle aspects um that's what makes it has a huge compound effect and it makes a whole lot of difference and speaking to how you know people receive the unbounce uh, rebrand i was very curious how did you measure um the impact of the rebrand what did you look at to see if you know what you expected to happen was happening yeah. Uh, so, as I mentioned, um, when we were originally doing an audit of all of our different brand collateral, we were also doing um, some sentiment analysis testing in the market. So we would share our current brand pieces with our customers and then just kind of ask questions like, what do you think about this? Um, out of these words, which one? Which words do you associate with the, the current Unbounce brand? And this forms a picture of you know how, you know how people are uh, are perceiving certain aspects of your brand on a top level, uh, and then you then follow up with a little bit more in-depth interviews to get a little bit more understanding as to what some of those things mean. So we you know we were we were finding that the, there are certain aspects of our brand which were being perceived as a little bit more boring, a little bit more robotic, um, and and. Uh, we felt like we wanted internally we felt like we were a very human brand very people focused customer centric but obviously that wasn't being exuded externally so looking at those sentiments and saying okay well we want to be able to change those over time what are the things we want to represent externally how do we want to change that those sentiments so then going through the process of uh, our, our brand update uh, and then after it launches uh, a little bit a little bit on it's important to then readdress uh, the market and your customers with a similar sort of exercise so we went back and said okay how are we feeling about the the unbounced brand what sort of sentiment are you getting from it and it was great to see that the, there was definitely a, a lot more sentiment around um you know being a little being obviously more human uh, less robotic uh, less cold and unapproachable uh, and i think a lot of this was the, the nature of some of the, the visuals we were using and obviously our tone of voice as well, and that it was becoming a lot more conversational. We're representing more people. We're less reliant on illustration, which can sometimes be a little bit more cold and robotic as well. Um, so it was great to see after, you know, uh, six months on, even just six months in the market, having get, getting that sentiment analysis back from uh, from some of those interviews and seeing that the perception had already changed, which is great. So um, being able to measure um, uh, a brand evolution through 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 you know the people who are seeing it every day is is so important. So 
uh, asking them what, what they feel about it, what are those things they associate it through a sentiment analysis or through an interview are, are pretty integral ways to measure how it's resonating and whether that matches with how you want it to resonate in the market. Mm. And I love that you're taking, let's say, the most um, kind of painstaking approach to it, that you're taking the customer interviews approach to it, because obviously quantitative data and, you know, I know Unbounce loves data and it's mm -hmm. doing such great things with it. But at the same time, you're you're looking to capture the whole context and there is no better way from my own experience as well to do that than to actually talk to people and understand, you know, where they're coming from in ways that are both related and unrelated to the brand because everything matters and everything goes into that decision and into that perception. So um, thank you for sharing that with me. I think that is a very valuable kind of piece of advice to always keep in mind that these conversations that obviously are incredibly valuable when they happen all the time, but they're all, all the more important when they need to kind of evaluate the impact of a project like a huge rebrand, you know, in, in the market. To, you've, you've shared so many rich insights with us, you know, um, about the soft launch, about all the kind of, you know, sometimes difficult, but always valuable conversations that you had around risks and around what you wanted to keep from Unbounce's 10-year uh, history, what you wanted to evolve and how, and how you got people to work together to communicate and to to build this this rebrand and to launch it. Uh, and since we started with your perspective and your personal perspective and how it all started for you, I was wondering if you could share with us kind of what was the one thing that surfaced from you for th through this entire process and maybe after it? What's one thing that you took away that you found extremely valuable that might serve other kind of uh, specialists that get involved in rebrands as well? Ooh, one, one thing out of so many. <laughs> <I'd say. laughs> there can be more. We can, we can do a top three, a top five. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's a great question. Um, I, I think, I think one thing, uh, going back to what we discussed around, um, some of those, some of the, some of the trepidation, I internally you can have surrounding, uh, the, the, the lead up to a rebrand and, um, you know, the fear of putting it out there and, um, you know, what if, what if we make a mistake? What if we, you know, do the wrong thing? Um, I think there's, a, there's always going to be those things uh, to a certain extent. I think it's important to, you know, to remember that, um, you know, brand is a big part of culture, but um, just because you you evolve certain parts of our brand doesn't mean your culture is going to suddenly change overnight or it might not even change at all. Um, culture is something which in many businesses, I think is, if it is, if you have a strong pre-existing culture, that's going to live on whether you, you know, you've completely changed the front of your company or not. Um, and that, that is still going to be something which is, you know, existing past, past a rebrand, past two rebrands, it's still going to live on. And culture is something almost evergreen about culture in a company and that it, it's always going to be there on one uh, form or another. So um, reminding people of that is, I think, is pretty important um, in that we, you know, we, we have this culture, which we, which is always going to be here for us. Um, and then some other, some other lessons and things which just kind of come top of mind as we, as, as I kind of look back on the, on the, the, the rebrand uh, or the brand evolution so, so it's interesting when um, when companies evolve their visual style. Uh, so you look to 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 then um, you might look at what 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 everyone else in the market is doing. So you look at all of these different styles in the market, and you say, okay, perhaps. Um, everyone is using illustration right now. So illustration is something which has become, you know, maybe a little bit stagnant in the in the industry and maybe illustration is something we want to avoid. So we want to evolve to use more photography, 
Um, um, we want to use more, you know, people focused imagery, uh, less illustration, perhaps less iconography. Um, so you, you, you start to create something unique and it feels very unique for you, for you. Um, and then as was, was our case, we saw that other companies started to launch with very people first photography led um brand updates in the six months leading up to our brand update so then you start to have the questions internally of okay well do, you know do we do we still launch a, a photography first brand do we still go with this style what if everyone has this same sort of style and I, and i think and i know i mentioned this earlier a good solid rebrand or brand evolution comes from having addressed very core cool foundational things about the company which have then informed which have then informed the style which have then informed the tone of voice so you know the the visual representation is one expression of some of those foundational things you've aligned on so i think the important thing is to have aligned on those core foundational elements and then uh you know the the visual side is secondary to that um, in, in that it's a representation of a lot of those, those, those foundational things. So, um, you, you almost have to just say, well, this is right for us because this is the sort of company we want to be, regardless of how everyone looks and how everyone else is perceiving themselves or putting themselves across in the market. This is true to us and who we are as in our core. And um, we want to be represented this way, regardless of perhaps whether there's a couple of other companies who maybe look a little similar, that's fine. Um, it, it, it's the important thing is who you want, how you want to be perceived in a com uh, as a company uh, out there and, and, and almost, you know, just, just, just go for it. Put yourself out there. Take that risk, and um, and and don't look back. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how all the great things happen, don't they? When we're true to ourselves, and when we're doing something that aligns with us, and that makes us feel right when there's uh less and less or none of that let's say internal conflict uh and that's when you know what that a culture feels right that a rebrand feels right that you know interacting or making a choice to be uh, someone's customer uh feels right i feel like that um kind of let's say um it's it's still internal alignment with ourselves it's kind of what we're all craving for these days and i'm so glad to you know to have gone uh, kind of under your guidance through this entire story and, and figure out, you know, how to make things happen. And I think that there are many powerful lessons in everything that you've shared with us, not just for other people working on brands or rebrands, but generally for people looking to evolve uh, themselves and their kind of approach to work, um, yeah. to, you know, getting involved in community, to expressing themselves and to standing out, which is something that I know more people could use uh, a, a little bit more confidence in their own choices. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, James, for your time and for your generous insights and for, you know, helping us go even further into the Unbounce rebrand. This has been extremely insightful and it's been, um, well, uh, let's say a, a fan's come true, <laughs> a fan's dream come true, given that um, I've seen, you know, Unbounce from the outside and, and having a chance to peek in uh, was extremely exciting. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Andrew. It's been a pleasure to to talk through some of these things with you and, and, and relive a lot of the experiences we went through um, in going through the, the brand evolution in 2019. It was it was a it was great to revisit a lot of these things with you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for exploring another fascinating rebrand process with us. If you found it helpful, subscribe to the show and leave us a review. Until next time, this is Andra Zaharia. Thanks for watching the Drag and Drop Show by Creatopy.